After you install Arch Linux, the first thing you need to know is that your desktop environment doesn't matter. Your hardware and drivers, on the other hand, do matter. For example, if you have an NVIDIA card, you'll want to run this command and according to what is returned, install the proper driver. For me, I have an RTX 3080, so I should install the NVIDIA Open Driver. If I had a different kernel other than Linux, I would install the NVIDIA Open DKMS. Make sure you also have DKMS set up if you're using a DKMS driver. You can see how to do that on the page for DKMS on the Arch Linux wiki. For 32-bit application support, make sure you have the multi-lib repository enabled. And as you see here, all you have to do is come into this file and uncomment these two lines. These two lines right here are uncommented, and all you need to do after that is run sudo pacman syu, and that will initialize the whole system to have the multi-lib packages available. You can now install the lib32 NVIDIA utils package. Make sure to also install the NVIDIA utils package to make sure your Nouveau driver, which comes default with Arch Linux, is blacklisted. You can also do this to manually blacklist it to ensure that you only have your NVIDIA driver installed. If you have an AMD GPU, all you need to do is install the Mesa package, and for 32-bit application support, also install the lib32 Mesa package. For Intel graphics, it is the same as AMD, just the Mesa drivers. I also recommend you install Wine Staging, Wine Mono, and Wine Tricks. Wine Staging is the latest bleeding edge release of Wine for Arch Linux. Wine Mono adds mono support for Wine. And Wine Tricks is a really useful utility for installing or modifying your prefixes. Think of a Wine prefix as a specialized directory that acts as a self-contained virtual Windows environment. So we can make however many wine prefixes we want on our file system. And each of these can have games installed and these prefixes can be for different purposes. We can have this prefix here designed for normal applications, this prefix here for games, and we can have a separate prefix for whatever else you want. And we can have a runner that actually runs the Windows environment, so to say. And there's many different options for this, but the most popular ones are GE Proton and Wine, obviously. I've never had any reason to use any other runner aside from the Wine Staging Package and GE Proton. But I know others have had success with runners such as Soda, Cafe, and Cron4x Wine Builds. Next thing you're going to need is Steam, and Steam is in the multi-lib repository, so all you need to do is run sudo pacman-s steam, and once you have that installed, the next thing you're going to want to set up is Proton. So open up Steam, come into Steam, Settings, Compatibility, and under Default Compatibility Tool, select the version of Proton you want. And as you can see here, I'm using GE Proton. GE Proton is a fork of Proton with specific patches to ensure the highest compatibility for Windows games. You can install GE Proton by coming over to their GitHub, downloading one of the latest releases. GE Proton 10.12 is the latest for me right now. And then if you come over to their main readme, click on native installation, you can create this folder, extract that release, into this folder and then restart Steam. And then after you've completed that, you should have the GE Proton available under this dropdown. Now, whenever you click on a Windows game in your library, for example, Brawlhalla, which is a Windows only game, it should allow you to update, install, and play it. And as you can see here, everything works with games that support the anti cheat on Proton as well. Brawlhalla, for example, uses Easy Anti Cheat, but we can play it super simply just by clicking play. This feels absolutely native. If someone just put me into this, I wouldn't know that this was running in a compatibility layer on Linux. And if you're worried I'm only showing games with low fidelity graphics, there's many videos out there showcasing that Cyberpunk can even get higher FPS than Windows with the same settings under Proton. 
Now the question is, what if you want to use a different launcher without games that are available in Steam, such as the Epic Games launcher, the Ubisoft launcher, Battle.net launcher, EA Origins? For that, we're going to use Bottles. And we need to ensure that we have a couple packages installed before we can use Bottles effectively. We're going to be installing these packages depending on your hardware, supplementing the NVIDIA driver as we were talking about before, to ensure we have proper Vulkan support. Now we need Vulkan to utilize something called DXVK, which comes built into bottles, so you don't have to worry about installing it, but you do need these dependencies to ensure everything is working correctly. DXVK is a Vulkan-based translation layer for Direct 3D 8, 9, 10, and 11 which allows running 3D applications on Linux using Wine, using your GPU, translating the calls from DirectX to Vulkan. So we need Vulkan drivers to effectively use DXVK. And once we have those packages installed, we're going to need to install Bottles. Bottles' recommended method of installation is through Flatpaks. You can also install through the AUR, but that is potentially unsafe and not officially supported. In order to install Flatpaks, we're going to install the Flatpak package. We're also going to install the GNOME software package, just so we can have a nice browsing interface. So we just type in software here, bring this up, and we can type in bottles and click install right here. As you can see, I've already installed it. Another thing I want to install is Flatseal. This is to manage permissions for your Flatpak sandbox applications. For example, I want Bottles to be able to access my second hard drive, so I open up Flat Seal, come over to Bottles here, scroll down to the file system, and under Other Files, I added in my second SSD as a directory that is available to Bottles. Now, once you open up Bottles, you can see I have a couple launchers installed here already. Epic Games is one of them, Ascension Launcher, which is a private server for World of Warcraft, and the Vortex Mod Launcher. If you want to install a new bottle, you can come up here, click on gaming or application, depending on what you want to do. For most applications, they recommend just using your system wine instead of GE Proton for the most compatibility. For bottle directory, you can just pick whatever you want, but for this, I'm going to put it on my SSD2 partition and under name. If you wanted to do something like the Ubisoft launcher, we type in Ubisoft here. And then once that bottle is created, we can come in here. And if we had a standalone executable, we could just click Run Executable and then run the installer. But Ubisoft is a popular launcher, so we can come over to this list of programs that is curated by the community. And we can scroll down here. And for Ubisoft Connect, you can just click this download button and install that program. Now if I come into Ascension, for example, and come under Settings, you can see here Feral Game Mode is active. This is something that does not come by default in Arch Linux, and it is a set of optimizations for your CPU to basically give priority to the application. In 2025, the usefulness of game mode is debated, so if you want to just skip this section, go ahead. If I click play on this, you can see that I have this widget up here that lets me know that game mode is actually running here. So if I go game mode D dash S for status, we can see game mode is active. We turn this off, we can see game mode is now inactive. In order to set this up properly, we can come over here to the Arch Linux and follow the directions to a T. Game mode, install the game mode and lib32 game mode packages. We can ignore all of this, but we can add ourselves to the game mode user group. And this is super simple to do. As we can see, if I type in groups here, you can see I am part of the game mode user group. So if we type in TLDR here, G password, if we want to add ourselves to that group, we can type in sudo g password dash dash add your user and then the name of the group. Then reboot your system and you should have game mode available. Now you should be able to tick this feral game mode toggle here and enable game mode on all of your games. Now if for whatever reason you have issues with bottles, you can always install an application called Lutris. It is a little older and has a more antiquated UI, but it works and is tried and true. As you can see here, we can install it and see what I'm talking about. It has a sort of similar interface here. Under Wine, you would click this button here and select your Wine version. 
pick system, enable all these things such as DXVK, VKD3D, which is for DirectX 12 applications if you didn't know. And we can anable support for these battle eye anti-cheats, easy anti-cheat, feral game mode here as well. And you can install them through this plus up here. Very similar to bottles, but I just prefer bottles because of its sleek design. And to show you this in action, and to show you that it runs well, you can come over here and I can open this up, boots right up, click play, and we're in. It runs buttery smooth, almost the exact same performance, sometimes better than Windows performance. 173 FPS, ultra graphics. Granted, this is an older game, but still, this is clearly using our GPU to its capacity. Now, if you're a Minecraft fan, all you want to install is an application called Prism Launcher. It's an all-encompassing solution for CurseForge, ModRenth, whatever version of Minecraft you want to play. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, this is all too much. I just want to be able to double-click on an EXE and open the program. Well, this is actually possible and not actually that hard. On Nautilus, if you double-click an EXE, it automatically opens it with Wine. As you see here, open with Wine Windows Program Loader. I'm sure on Dolphin it has probably something similar. So if I just open it like this, just by double clicking on it, it's gonna open the program, but as you can see in the background, it's at like one FPS because it's not using our GPU. Now we can set this up by natively installing DXVK. And we can do this by coming over to the DXVK GitHub, downloading the latest release and extracting it. I've already done that here. You can come into here, open this in the terminal, and then we can just install this based on their instructions. Now, first thing we want to do is export the wine prefix environment variable, and the prefix we're going to export is just dot wine. This is the default prefix that wine uses when you don't specify a prefix on its own. So we're going to export that. Then we're going to just run these two commands, ensuring that we are in this directory. This is going to copy those DLLs over to our wine prefix. You should have no errors here. Then we're going to run wine CFG. Come over here to the libraries tab. And we're going to add in DLL overrides for each one of these DLLs. So we're going to click that and we're going to click D3, D8 add, find D3, D9, add, and continue. Now after you have these five DL overrides in, you're going to hit apply, OK, and you can close all this, and then find your executable and double click on it. And as you can see, it's using our GPU and rendering at well above 60 FPS now. Obviously, this is the most elegant solution, but it's hard to debug some problems when you run into them, unless you know exactly what you're doing with wine. 